नमस्ते एवरीवन दिस इज हर्षा रमैया ईसीए नेशनल कोर कमेटी मेंबर टुडे वी आर हियर फॉर अ वंडरफुल डिस्कशन दिस वेबिनार इज होस्टेड बाय कर्नाटका पंजाब एंड हरियाणा टेरिटरी एंड वी हैव इनवाइटेड वंडरफुल स्पीकर्स फ्रॉम ईच टेरिटरी सो अलाउ मी टू इंट्रोड्यूस ऑल द स्पीकर्स टू यू सो ऑन दिस पैनल फर्स्ट वी हैव मिस वैदेही हाय वैदेही why they you can unmute your button for a while to say hi okay uh, why they why they he is the director of podda jambo hi, kids hi. and yes. hi and she is the territory head of karnataka then on this panel we have a, dr deepika aluwalia hi deepika hi harsha hi everyone uh, deepika is the school consultant and the territory head for haryana chapter Uh, then on this panel we have a sheetal jaitley hi sheetal hi hi everyone hello and sheetal is the founder of chalk teacher training academy on this panel we have one male amongst all the females is mr amanpreet singh arora hi amanpreet singh hello everyone thank you ma'am for having me here giving this opportunity Thank you so much Amanpreet. Amanpreet is the CEO of ABC Magical World Preschool Chain and Secretary of ECA Punjab Territory. So welcome everyone and the topic today that we have chosen to discuss is a very wonderful topic uh, the need of this hour uh, making home based learning program developmentally appropriate. because i'm sure this is the way ahead in today's times uh, because each one of us wants to reach out to the children in the best possible way but educators are struggling with the platforms with developmentally appropriate programs so we decided why not have a discussion on this topic wherein we share our experiences we share the challenges that came our way and the solutions that we figured out to Uh, get through these challenges so the first question uh, for uh, today's panel is for dr deepika dr deepika can you unmute your button yeah yeah so the first question here is home based learning program definitely has come to our rescue during this period of covid or lockdown so how will you justify that how as has this uh, uh, online sessions or home based learning programs come to our rescue and how has it helped us to reach the children dr deepika to you yeah even i think that uh, home based learning program has been a rescue uh in this uh, scenario you know imagine a world where physical schools are shut and even this platform is absent so you have absolutely zilch in your hand so i definitely believe that it's a rescue you know um, also there is a shift uh, from a physical to a virtual platform now you know also being described this as the future of education i think it endorses many benefits uh i'll list one by one first is the foremost is the uh, continuity you know in the wake of the lockdown where physical schools are shut schools have adopted uh, you know this home based learning approach for the continuity of the studies uh, so that uh, there is no break in the studies and the learning happens constructively and in continuity second is the regularity you know we all know that the uh, child's brain uh, develops from 0 to 5 year the most so this uh, age is very crucial for us so you know uh, this method also ensures that the daily timetable which is given by the teachers to the students is a mix of healthy routines and the regular in, uh, learning third is the technology since now you know those were the days which we have used to imagine you know e schools or we used to you know think about okay will that be ever a possibility or not so yes technology is an enabler and it has made it possible in this time right uh, child uses uh, you know sense modalities and the learning happens best when the sense modalities all the sense modalities of the child is used is engaged you know uh, what this platform has given is the hearing the sense of sight and the sense of uh, hearing is most engaged and also these are the most important uh, learning um, sense modalities also while learning so this platform gives an augmented virtual uh, platform or experience to the children it enhances the experience of learning third is the flexible schedules uh, you know uh, the when we use asynchronous method of learning 
you know the child and the parent both have an opportunity of uh, you know choosing their own time of convenience to learn since then that the child is also ready parent is also comparatively free with apart from the household chores so this platform gives uh, you know this uh, kind of uh, freedom to the parent and the child at ease they can learn third is the sense of uh, responsibility and self discipline you know still i mean uh, even if there is a you say ease of learning at own time the child can learn at his or her own time but still uh, you know they have deadlines to meet you know this initiates uh, you know self starter kind of feeling from from the parent and the child as well i am again and again talking about parents because here we are specifically talking about the preschoolers the kindergartners so that is why it should be both convenient to the child as well as to the parent fourth uh, uh, i would talk about since it's a new method of learning you know it curates lot of curiosity excitement and creativity in the child since this platform has never been introduced to the child before so also it will help develop cognitive skills language skills can be easily developed over this platform according to the world health uh, uh, world economic forum this approach is more effective than a classroom teaching and the retention is about 40 to 60% as compared to the uh, classroom teaching where the learning retention is only about 8 to 10% so i definitely feel that uh, this is you know done if done in the right perspective and in the right manner this is one of the most forthcoming and brilliant practice that the parents can adopt and teachers can adopt thank you uh, thank you so much dr dipika for putting it all together and very rightly when you concluded you mentioned that this is a very wonderful method if used in the right perspective and in the right method so i will now quickly go to vaidehi why they uh, when we are uh, adopting this method to reach out to the children uh, preschool owners or the teachers or the educators struggle with designing it so considering the age of the preschools how can home based learning be made developmentally age appropriate because i'm sure that when you are taking a class in a traditional way the whole scenario is different but when you are coming virtually in front of the children i think those lesson plans have to be turned into the session plans and we have to you know go deep deep inside and then understand how it will be effective and how it will be taken by the child and the parents as well so vaidehi i want you to throw some light on this perspective uh thank you ms harsha and uh, a very good morning to everybody uh, very nice to to be on this panel uh i only hope that i have been heard and i'm so sorry i have been having a lot of difficulty hearing from all of you so i'm only hoping that you all are able to hear me uh, uh is it okay my audio is okay perfect okay i'll go ahead but i unfortunately i'm not able to hear all of you quite well so you know i heard the question uh a very important pertinentation more so at this point of time uh i think you know it's more important harsha for us and the viewers to understand what actually is developmentally appropriate practice uh developmentally appropriate practice actually refers to the teaching decisions and the intentionality adapting to individuals child's age experiences interests and ability so hence the cornerstone of the uh, uh, you know dap which we shortly call developmentally appropriate practice is intentionality so the teacher has to be very intentional in adapting the curriculum to each child hence developmentally appropriate practice does not mean making it any easier for the child but rather it means ensuring that there are sufficient goals and experiences that are suited for their learning and development challenging them enough so i would rather call it as uh, for a child it should be a stretch but it should not be a leap so that's that's how a dap should get adapted so teacher needs to plan the activity uh, uh, developmentally appropriate which means keeping the holistic development of the child in mind so when we talk of a holistic development it includes as everybody knows social emotional development physical development cognitive and language development easier said than done how oh, the challenge is it is very easy for us to somehow adapt 
once we have the knowledge of dap in a physical classroom now the challenge comes in when we are trying to actually connect with the child through a home based learning and a home based learning should not be confused with a uh, home uh, home home study or home schooling by a parent where the parent actually is a primary teacher whereas a home based learning is where there is a professional teacher who takes care of the developmental requirement of a child but then we also the uh, parent as a co teacher here and ensure that we connect together so making dap developmentally appropriate for a screen uh, requires i think two three things to be very very vital before we even plan a program first thing is the connect with the parent i think the connect with the parent needs to become lot more frequent because as i already explained it is dap is where the curriculum should fit every child but not we fit all the children into the curriculum it's not a cookie cutter methodology so keeping that in mind i am not physically present in the child in the class to see how children are their requirements are so connecting with a parent having long conversations with the parents understanding what the child, what kind of background the child comes from what is the experience where does the child stand in terms of learning and a continual connect is very important that is one of the primary factor and i think the teachers collaboration goes a very very long way here more than what we would do when we are working at the campus so when i talk of teachers collaboration i think it is very important that the current teacher so let's stay if take an example of a junior kg teacher it's very important for her to connect with the nursery teacher and take the knowledge transfer of her understanding of all the children in her class that makes it very comfortable for the junior kg teacher to plan the curriculum for to suit the needs of these individual children in her class and of course you know uh, without saying the positive nurturing relationships with all the adults who engage in responsive conversations is very important coming to the actual uh, way of how we plan uh it is very important that you cannot have very long connect screen connect with the child so based on the age group probably we will have to split this into multiple sessions so uh we really look at probably a play group and a nursery child uh to have a maximum of about 15 20 minutes of connect with the teacher uh and you know it should be totally play based because children you know we are all play practitioners children love and they learn wonderfully through play so it has to be through play a good short connect and more than anything i think the classroom size here matters a lot probably i personally feel it should be even half the size of the classrooms that we actually handle on a on campus education maybe you know i would look at probably about 7 or 8 because throughout the session that 15 20 minutes i'm connected with the child i need to have a social and emotional connect also so which makes it very important that we work in very very small sizes too and short term short term, uh, you know connect but at the same time the routine has to be established children thrive under a wonderful good routine given to them because a child feels that i am in control of the environment so it's very important for us to upgrade the parents also to give this good routine for a child where a child knows this is a time i'm going to say hello to all my teachers hello to my friends hello to my you know classmates and this is what i'm going to do so a fixed routine is very important for the child involving all senses you know when i talk of say all senses it also includes you know the vestibular sense right you know though so we talk of actually seven senses i will come to that you know if i get more time uh, you know to talk about you know a little more uh, yoga is one session that should not be left out and again yoga could be imparted to the children through a very beautiful play way method so that is something that i would always recommend so all senses has to be included variety is the spice of life so children cannot focus beyond 7 to 8 minutes on a particular activity so even within that 20 minute connect that we have ensure that we switch the activity the concept could remain the same but the activity could differ 
uh, so that you know we hold the child's attention and ensure there is a lot of physical movement given to the child no child can would want to and we don't want a child to be sitting and connecting to us and just listening to us so include music and movement dance yoga intersperse our activity with those to make it very appropriate to bring in a physical energy and a development in the child and uh, last but not the least i highly recommend the storytelling sessions again you know i will come back if i get a little more time i will probably give some tangible examples of how we really connected with the storytelling bringing in you know experiential learning you know uh, uh, inquiry based learning discovery learning all kinds of learning that we generally talk of is can be brought in through storytelling empathy uh, you know uh, 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 delayed gratification uh, gratitude all of these things could be so easily brought through sto storytelling so i think uh, storytelling should be the also along with the play storytelling should be the core uh you know importance in developing the activities for children so and you know one more thing that i will add again you know i will expand if i get a little more time maslow's hierarchy needs for learning is a very very important theory that i think all teachers should know when they are planning a uh, developmentally appropriate curriculum and i think this should also be made known to a parent because now the physical environment for a child is home whereas we create that conducive atmosphere in the campus on the in this classroom sir whereas now the child is at home so a parent should know what is the hierarchy of needs the maslow's hierarchy of needs for learning is a beautiful theory so a parent should be given this advantage of understanding that so that the child could move forward beautifully so i would pass on to the next panelist thank you so much thank you so much vaidehi i would uh, surely underline a few things that you spoke i would really like to repeat those things a uh, number one you mentioned to stretch not to take a leap i think the entire crux of what you said when you are sitting down and planning a developmentally appropriate curriculum or a home based program for a child i think if we keep this thing in mind we will be able to definitely design a perfect developmentally appropriate program for a child second you mentioned about home schooling and home based learning program very rightly mentioned why they he because parents are mixing both of these they feel that it is home schooling but definitely home schooling is entirely a different segment and home based program because when it comes to a home based program there is a facilitator a teacher in between who is guiding the content and passing on to the parent for the child to understand so i think if the parents are kept in loop as you very rightly mentioned when you concluded that everything that is planned has to be addressed to the parents has to be explained to the parents because their confidence their understanding is definitely going to help us to bring what we want the best outcome of the entire program and another thing that i uh, liked is knowledge transfer that you mentioned that anything that we are planning the perfect knowledge transfer has to be done uh, in terms of teachers or in terms of child or parents so i think if we keep all these parameters in mind and then if we plan a home based curriculum it is going to make wonders so thank you vaidehi and definitely i will come back to you in the second round as well thank you uh, now i will move to sheetal uh, sheetal can you switch on your mic please So Sheetal, I will take forward from where Vaidehi he has stopped. Challenges and opportunities while planning the home-based curriculum. So how can you know? Uh, I'm sure we all had challenges, and it was a trial error kind of an experiment that we all have done. And attending these kind of uh, webinars, we have got to know a way ahead. So what are your challenges, and what are your solutions that you can offer us while designing a home-based, developmentally appropriate curriculum? uh see as human beings um you know we we all see the challenges first because we all are already adapt to kind of one environment and uh, coming out of that environment and adapting something new is always a challenge for each and every one of us now if you look at just some times before where uh, you know there was demonetization i never used to use a paypal or a google pay 
but when demonetization happened we all started using uh, google pay or a paytm or any kind of digital mode of payments uh, similarly when this lockdown started i i am a very kinesthetic person so i cannot stay back at home even while i'm talking i i need to roam about and all but uh, the, the first couple of days were really challenging for me but now i feel like okay uh, i i am rejuvenated i am uh, getting more opportunity to work i can connect to so many people who are sitting down at home rather not being on road so um you know so challenges are definitely uh, there but until and unless we take them as uh, as a part of something on which we work on and then build on it uh, i i would rather uh, divide the challenges into four r's okay so uh, the first r of the challenge would be the resource uh definitely there's the due to the lockdown there are uh, the shops are closed parents have limited access to a lot of materials as such so so definitely resource is something which is definitely a, a challenge at this point of time apart from all these things uh time being one of the most important resource where parents are already working on their home course some of the parents are working from home time one of the being important resources that is very limited um third point on the resource would be again uh, the technical resources a uh, good amount of internet because now there are netflix is going on because you will have uh, you know set of family members who are wanting to see something there is a second set of people who are working from home and there's obviously the third set of our loved ones our kiddos who have to have their programs going on so technicality is definitely one of the uh, important resource which is <clears throat> definitely challenged now apart from that you need to have a smartphone or a, a laptop as well which has to be a little extra at home to to conduct some kind of uh, programs which is going to be uh, on a learning platform like this uh the second r of a challenge which i would take is the readiness the readiness of the parents the readiness of the teachers uh the readiness of our kiddos right now we all were pushed into this situation where we were definitely not ready to take any of these things um parents not being experts into this field of conducting anything developmentally appropriate they need guidance of experts as by the he rightly said right there has to be a facilitator who is absolutely guiding the program way in and way out until and unless we do not have an expert with us it's going to be really a challenge hence needs to be an expert who backs up the entire program as we understand we have parents working in different other aspects and teachers have to be that guiding line or the uh, torch to get this program developmentally appropriately reaching to our young ones um, obviously it's a challenge for teachers because they would be facing this kind of platform for the first time some of them have fear that oh my god how do i use the screen how do i uh, uh, you know from my comfort zone which was there inside the classroom i am going to go to the living room of the parents so that's that's again another challenge where the readiness of the teacher is not there uh, am i going to be judged what am i going to wear am i going to be uh, you know seen throughout the session obviously yes so these these readiness uh, questions are definitely going to be there in all of our minds uh coming to readiness of our kiddos it's again a very new platform where they are seeing people interacting on screens they would have seen rhymes they would have seen movies they would have done a lot of things but something like this when people are actually talking to them over uh, a platform like this it's it's actually exciting to them but yes they need to be very carefully using it how they are going to use it so again there has to be an expert who is going to definitely guide them across uh the third the third r in the terms of um, the challenge would be the requirement the requirement the basic requirement of a child which is a social requirement uh, an emotional requirement which 
which definitely gets compromised to a bit because yes once they go to a preschool or they meet their friends the kind of spark the kind of vibe the kind of tactile stimulation which they get it it definitely has a little bit of challenge when we use platform like this uh, the fourth r is going to be uh, obviously a relaxed atmosphere right now they wake up on their own time and mamas and dadas are never ever taken seriously for learning specifically my child i mean he has taken mama as fun element so mama can go for a movie mama can go for a park but mama cannot have learning component attached to her so they are the kings and the queens at home so so we need to have different kind of approaches to have these developmentally uh, you know appropriate learning now having said all these challenges there is a huge set of opportunities also which are there now uh, again the opportunities also i will have it in four hours the first hour is the reach now can you imagine the kind of reach the parent the teacher has to any kind of content they they can um so my i i run a teacher training institute now i have batches where teachers are there from different parts of india i am sitting at bangalore at my home and taking training sessions for them so the reach to the content of the teacher is enormous she has an enormous time to get a uh, uh, reach to this content uh, imagine a child sitting at bangalore uh, taking um, you know learning from a dance teacher at kolkata right a yoga session from somebody at kerala you know so the reach absolutely is amazing i mean if if we look at it as a perspective the the world is open now the learning is limitless learning is limitless uh the second r of the opportunity would be the reduced stress can you imagine how much relieved we are without the honking sounds without spending hours together on the transportation kids not traveling being at home helping you guys on to the home course playing a lot and along with that having learning at the same point of time so they are relaxed and they are learning which is something as an educator i am the most happiest person that they are learning with their own ease they're learning with play they can sleep a little more at least because they don't have to have that hurry of getting ready and going into this transport and you know because they have to reach school at time they have to travel about 30 minutes or about 45 minutes so that 30 45 minutes they can actually sleep a little bit more now the third r is going to be the routine now uh, obviously because they are at home and obviously we are doing some kind of learning program uh, along with them this definitely keeps their whole routine of learning on track they are not sitting idle and as vaidhi he rightly said that if we are actually having people guide them appropriately and following this whole routine then the fourth r which is the rebound or once everything opens the rebound to coming back to the so called normal is going to be very easy for them now just imagine this whole concept if we are just taking it as a challenge we don't see a solution but then yes there is so much of solution and learning with if we see it as an opportunity that that's that's it should be from my side beautifully explained sheetal uh, what you have done you know sheetal you have opened lot of windows you've opened lot of doors you know when it comes to challenges uh, because very rightly you mentioned that every challenge has a solution in itself it's the perspective that we have to find out 
So the four hours of the challenges that you shared, I will request you to just type them in the comment section box because there are a lot of audience who is asking for it and the four hours of solutions that you mentioned. Sure. Because uh, very rightly, this quote will go with this, that every cloud has a silver lining. So it's on to us to crib about the challenges and the struggles that we are on to, or rather find solutions and have a way ahead. Because very rightly, when you started, you mentioned that any change that comes is always difficult in the first phase to even accept. And follow is on the secondary stage, but at least to accept that uh, is, is also very difficult on the very first phase. But then if you dig down and you make it a way forward in your life, I think definitely we all have found solutions and we all will find solutions. But very nicely, you've summed it up in the four hours. So thank you so much, Sheetal, for sharing it with us. Then we have one, the only male uh, on this platform, that is Mr. Amanpreet Singh. Uh, Amanpreet, as you heard all of us talking on various issues, I just want to ask you one question. What do you think is the way forward, given the current scenario? How do you think would the dynamics between the school kids and the parents differ as we have hit the reset button? Because earlier uh, the uh, uh, scenario was different. The equation was different. Now the equation is different. And hence, post a lockdown, when the schools will resume, the scenario is even going to be different. So how do you think will the dynamics work? Amanpreet, on to you. Thank you so much ma for giving the opportunity. Uh, I believe this is the right time to prove, as we say, that early childhood education is parent and preschool partnership. Uh, for long, we have been he hearing a phrase, uh, mother is the first teacher and home is the first school. So preschools are there to prove and guide how this, this is going to be possible. Uh, as the COVID situation came as an unheard and uncertain disaster of the millennium, so nobody was prepared for it. But wisdom says that if you can't change the situation, change yourself. So in the current scenario, as teachers have changed themselves a lot by working from home with the new ideas and creativity, so parents also need to change and come, come out of their comfort zone and do multitasking. Uh, nothing lasts forever, so it is true for, for Corona also. So create your own history so that you can remember and smile later. Get as many memories as, as you can with your life. Yes, of course. Uh, dynamics differ, but teacher-parent partnership will become more refreshed, more improved and cordial. Now, teachers will not only be teaching children, but also teaching parents as well how to teach their little ones. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Amanpreet. Uh, very rightly, one word that you spoke uh, sums up everything that I asked, teacher-parent partnerships. I think they have become more and more impactful. They have, they, we have bonded, actually, you know, way better than it, the bond was earlier. So I think uh, this partnership will definitely lead us to another segment when we resume the schools back. Thank you so much, Amanpreet. I will come back to Deepika. Deepika, can you switch on your mic? We will talk a little bit upon uh, the parent and teacher partnership because now what has happened that the parents are in loop of everything because a teacher on the screen, she's sharing her lesson plan. Uh, so to reach out to the child, she has to have the parent as a mediator. So we have to take the parents into confidence as Vaidehi very rightly said. So any tips from your side, how we can strengthen these relationships so that we can reach out best to the children? Deepika? Yeah, actually, it's a, it's a very valid point also, no matter if the teacher is you know, trying to connect with the child as much as she wants to, you know, we still need another mediator from parent, it's from a child's perspective, which is the parent. So parent role plays a very important role in how the child is going to learn. So here, there are a few, uh, you know, they are very general tips. Uh, they're not very scientific or something, but they're very general tips and very normal tips that I'm going to give is acknowledge. You know, I understand uh, that parents are very apprehensive of this platform. They are really confused about this platform. But once they acknowledge that this has happened and this is going to be there for a while, right? So it will give them a sense of readiness in them also. As Sheetal very rightly said, that readiness is very much important as much as in a child, as much as in a parent. So if a parent is ready, obviously the child that will transfer automatically to the to the child. 
right so parent has to acknowledge that this is the platform and parent has to acknowledge to the child also that this is the kind of teaching that it is going to be there and this is the learning and this is how the learning is going to happen second is encourage encouragement i really expect a lot of encouragement from the teacher and from the parent so that that can be fostered onto a child see uh what parent and teachers should basically focus on is learning irrespective of the platform on which it is being given so even parents and even teachers you know we should strictly be focusing on learning our focus is child and how child can learn it should be the main objective and the goal thirdly uh i would also you know uh, encourage uh, teachers as well as parents to give a very specific feedback you know about if a certain task has been given to a to a child and if the parent is finding some difficulty the this should be a very you know specific co communication between the child and the parent uh, sorry between teacher and the parent right where the child is finding difficulty and the teacher should also give very specific details of you know of recommendations and uh, all those points to help as in how to improve that difficulty or overcome that difficulty right and also you know demonstration i mean if uh, a teacher could you know give a demonstration of a task that has been given to a child it will be lot easier also uh, for the parent to understand and then it can be transferred uh, to the this uh, child i also found uh, this uh, point very interesting of whether he is about stretch and not leaping i mean it is it is it is kind of a you know there there no need to jump you know parents should you know be calm composed okay there is a facilitator who is going to help us your child will be learning irrespective so you know you should be you they should be uh, try to strike a balance uh, between them they don't have to become you know confused or uh, chaotic at this time as it is the situation is such yeah so that's yeah. the thing thank you so much thank you so much i think acknowledgement and encouragement if Uh, they are in the right proportion and given timely i think it will help both of us the educator and the parents and then ultimately it is going to benefit the child very rightly about vaidehi when she mentioned about the stretch and the leap i think we all as educators and the parent community has to understand that there is going to be an academic delay we are not here focusing on finishing the syllabus we are here to understand and given proper understanding to the child and make the connect and in this connect we don't have to rush with the syllabus so i will now come back to vaidehi vaidehi can you just elaborate on the point when you mentioned about stretch and leap because most of the schools here are making a rush to complete the syllabus so i think if we can make them understand that there is definitely going to be an academic delay but in this process of time we have to keep the connect with the child and build a relationship with the parent which goes a longer way so vaidehi on to you vaidehi uh, <clears throat> yeah yes sarsha i'm so sorry i mean today is not been a, a good day for me to hear from all of you i've been like hearing trying to make the connection my brain is may have trying to put the words and make the connections <laughs> luckily right. i have been heard to all of you and not been able to maybe i have to hear the recording of all of you speaking uh, but you know uh, with whatever little i could hear i'm just going to tell whatever else was there on my mind so i think uh, uh, we emphasized a lot on the parental connection which is very important at this point and it is the mindset change that should happen both in the teachers minds and the parents minds i think children are ready to receive it in whatsoever fashion we give it to them but finally i think the teacher should become very intentional because now she is not physically present in front of the child so she needs to think in terms of how do i bring in a developmentally appropriate practice behind a camera standing behind a camera right and how do i devise these activities how am i going to connect with the parent and make it less burdened for a parent to manage the rest of the activities so a possibility could be that she manages to send little more video recordings to the parent have a audio or a video connect with the parent to make them understand so things like that but the mind shift mindset change should happen because if we are here to think that yes you know we are going to reopen in another week or two weeks or three weeks it is anybody's guess 
so we might open and we might come to a lockdown and the precious time that these children are now in their brains are raring to receive the information from us it's not about the content it's not about you know that they need to learn the a b c d or the 1 2 3 but it is the stimulation their their the neurons are waiting for good connections to happen so it, that important time cannot be lost now so it's very very important that parents do understand that a interactive 15 20 minute of connection with the teacher works the best rather than using an app i'll just take a small example you know uh, take a, the song of old mac donald so there are so many versions of cartoon old mac donald on uh, the youtube so if you really play one of those you understand just in a second uh, there are like 10 images popping on the screen so a parent fails to understand the child is very watching very carefully and the child will certainly have the rote learning of this poem also but the visual bombardment in that one second the child would have seen like six images is that developmentally appropriate for the brain that is a question that nobody understands versus think of a teacher singing old mac donald using her teaching aids or her hand puppets trying to make the actions and children following our actions there is so much of brain involvement that happens here so this mindset change should happen both with the teachers and with the uh, parents more so with the parents that yes this is an interactive media for us now to connect with the school so that is very very important and coming back to uh, i just uh, spoke to you about the storytelling i would want to just you know uh, uh, give some tangible uh, examples which i also gave it in my last panel but i still would want to repeat that that you can bring in collaboration you can bring in critical thinking you can bring in bring in experiential learning engaged learning we did a, uh, a simple story of the thirsty crow which you know everybody knows uh. so finally the thirsty crow uh, you know will manage to you know the clever the crow is so clever manages to put the pebbles and then the water comes up so after the story we asked the children to bring a glass from their kitchen and keep the stones ready we had requested the parents and the children did this this is a wonderful experiential learning for a child this is a very tough uh, physics theory called the displacement theory the child without knowledge understood that the displacement occurred and because the water went in the water came up so it's experiential learning you know we just did a very small session on space so children danced for a space dance and then finally we said let's make an alien so they brought in the dough our uh, atta from the kitchen they said make the alien however you want so they created their own aliens they made pictures of those their parents took those pictures posted it to us and we celebrated whatever they did so there is so much of engagement that happens involvement of senses yoga could probably be done for 5 6 7 minutes with children we think it is not possible but again through storytelling it is so very possible we did this again with you know a story of a girl called nisha you know who walks into the jungle and then you know she sees various animals and the various animal poses was what the children did so now here we are including all, all the seven senses not just the five senses it includes the uh, the vestibular uh, uh, you know sense and it, it also includes the proprioceptive sense so yoga is such a magic for children and all the children got involved for almost 5 6 minutes so storytelling is a wonderful way that we could do children made rockets so we had asked children to keep the shapes ready the triangle and the squares and the circles and we asked them to put that together to make your own rocket because we did a space dance we did a robot dance so we them asked you know we asked them to make a rocket out of that so the amount of brain thing that happens when children made their own rockets this is nothing but tangrams what we call in our early childhood uh, language so children put the tangrams together to create a rocket so things like this uh, you know you can do a color hunt ask uh, show a color and ask children to run around in the house bring some color whatever object they have of that choice so you can bring in all kinds of learning and age learning experiential learning 
you know uh, you know inquiry based learning all of this could be brought into the class but then you know we need to be very intentional when we practice these you know activities so that you know thank you so much vaidehi thank you so much i will pick up about the mcdonald's uh, poem that you said exactly uh, when we are planning our uh, lesson plans and we are transferring it in, into a session plans we have to be very mindful how we are drafting it because as you mentioned there are a lot of uh, pictures that are bombarding over a poem rather than if the teacher does it the same thing is happening over a visual there is a poem which is running through as a, a screen and there is a poem wherein the teacher is acting out i think if we can incorporate these kind of things and if we can then uh, plan our sessions they are going to be more interactive uh, so thank you vaidehi for sharing thank all your views you. and now thank i will quickly come back to all the panelists for their closing statements so first i will come back to dipika for her closing statement for today's session dipika yeah thank you harsha i think uh... you know it's a difficult time for all of us and we should work in cooperation and with a lot of compassion with each other also it's a time of change and it is only then when we have stepped out of our comfort zone we only begin to change grow and transform and develop ourselves so i request all the parents and the teachers to focus on your child's learning irrespective on what platform it is given and also we should allow to think beyond ourselves our mental boundaries or physical boundaries you know of chalk talk method or any other method that we should you know overcome these challenges and work cohesively towards the learning goal of the child thank you thank you so much i will come back to sheetal for her closing statement sheetal uh somehow i am in love with this letter r <laughs> so um to to <laughs> to sum it up um i'll i'll take it forward from uh, what vaidya he said about old mcdonald i had i loved that the way she explained and uh, we all have to understand that uh, uh, our children love reality not fiction so when uh, when a child uh, sees the teacher doing something in front and once they come back to the school and they see the same teacher the reality is not more dream it's not a fiction rather than just seeing that rhyme of old mcdonnell on a tv and having those fictitious characters uh, so reality is definitely much more powerful um, secondly when i uh, talk about my second r for closing it out uh, we all should understand it's a readiness program we are making our kids ready okay they are getting ready for facing every situation they are getting ready for coming back to school they are they are getting ready to coming back to school we are just giving a bridge to them in the stop gap arrangement to make them or to facilitate them to ease out this difficult time uh my third r to close it out is not to react but to proact what we are doing is proacting rather than uh, you know reacting to any situation we as educators are proacting giving them ways means to cope up with this difficult situation and build a better future remember we are just delayed not stopping or collapsing thank you thank you so much sheetal thank you very beautifully i think the word r is going to be uh, the essence of this show today thank you sheetal i'll come to aman preet for his closing statements aman preet uh um, as everybody said i'll again request parents to be partnership a uh, partner in building the foundation of the child maybe teacher may not be able to deliver exactly what they were delivering in the classroom but ignore that you take it as a positive uh, side that god has given you the opportunity to be the partner in making the foundation of the child so, uh, this thing is not going to last long everything will be normal but yes just take advantage of this opportunity that god has given and be the partner of the early childhood 
Thank you so much, Amanpreet. Thank you so much. And I will come back again to Vaidehi for her closing statements. Vaidehi. Vaidehi, are you able to hear me? Vaidehi, yeah. are you able to? Yeah, uh, your closing closing comments. Uh, I'm not able to hear. You know what? Your closing comments. Yeah. You know show. what was the question? Uh, there was no question. Was Vaidehi, question? Uh, we are closing the show. I think we have lost Vaidehi. So on her behalf, I would really like to say thank you to all the panelists for sparing their time and sharing valuable inputs to make this session so, so knowledge rich. Thank you, Deepika. Thank you, Sheetal. Thank you, Amanpreet. And thank you, Vaidehi. Uh, thank you, Preetam, for making this uh, uh, show and allowing us all to be on this panel and sharing our knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving me the Thank you. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. It's been a privilege to be on this foundation.